Hey guys, what's up? It's Matt, welcome back. So, for my first video in my Do or Do Not series, I thought I would try some stuff with masks uh, in Premiere Pro. So I've always seen these videos where people play around with masks uh, to, you know, kind of do very basic uh, special effects. But, um, you know, you can get some quite interesting results with very basic special effects. So the two things that I've seen that I want to try, the first one is cloning yourself. In theory, like really straightforward, um, and I gave it a go and I got mixed results, but I learned quite a few things whilst I was trying to do it. And the second thing that I want to give a go is uh, a mask to, I don't know, I guess pull an object out of space, as it were. So the idea that I kind of came up with was that a uh, magician or someone like that would have an empty photo frame, their hand would go through the photo frame and disappear, and they would pull out a cup of tea. So I gave them a go, um, just off my own back to see what I could achieve, and I kind of got like varying results, but I definitely learned quite a few things to kind of try and improve them moving forward. Yeah, I guess let's kind of dive in and you can see the results. All right, yeah, I'm all right. What exactly is it that you're doing? I'm working out. Yeah. Why here? You know, exercise, all that, all that good I stuff. That. Woo -hoo -hoo. Um, do you mind not? I'm trying to, trying to read. Okay. Bye. All right. Okay. Fine. Okay. So I think that turned out quite well in the end. The main thing that I learned is with that one, I got super, super lucky. So I kind of made the conversation in my head as I went. So I, was sat, so I first started off uh, with me sat there reading uh, just that shot, uh, me completely by myself. Then I stood up and did the other part. And so basically when I'm sat there reading, uh, I'm having this conversation. So I kind of like, right, he's over there doing his thing, yada, yada, yada. I'm gonna look up, stare at him for a bit, and then he's gonna, uh, you know, so on and so forth. Then I stood up and did the other bit. I just did it all in one take um, just to, try in theory that would keep the lighting consistent um you know rather than like kind of stopping moving potentially knocking the tripod and moving things around and stuff like that so i just did it all in one take um so yeah then i stand up and i do the second part and i'm trying to remember the conversation that i just had and try to get the time and right and in all honesty all honestly i got very very lucky and that I was able to kind of sync it up and it works. So yeah, lesson learned in terms of doing this, a script is probably definitely needed. Obviously it would be ideal if I had someone off camera kind of reading the other lines, um, which would probably go a long way in terms of like syncing it up. Um, I imagine trying to do it by myself would be quite difficult. One idea I had, I'm not sure if it would work, would, would, would be to kind of record the conversations and kind of play it back and just cut out those bits of audio and stuff like that, I don't know. Maybe I'll try that method in the future, see what happens. That though was my second take of doing it. What I tried to do previously was a shot where I was sat on the sofa and then the other me just kind of comes, sits down next to him and so on and so forth. And this is where it kind of goes and gets a little bit technical in terms of the masking. And this was the lesson that I learned. Ideally, you want solid, unmovable, probably less cluttered backgrounds. So as you can see sort of in this, there's a lot going on, but ultimately one of me is sat on this spinny chair uh, and I don't move from that spot. And then the other one is in the space on the complete other side of the screen. There's nothing really texture wise uh, that kind of moves over from one half to the other half. So if you have a look at the mask here, you can see where I am sort of masked out, uh, the version of me on, on the chair. Um, I messed up a couple of little bits where I've kind of overstretched when I'm doing the exercises and I've obviously had to move the mask over. Again, um, my hand kind of goes up further as well from the sitting down position where I've had to then, um, yeah, just kind of move the mask around. But really, yeah, one half of the screen, um, not much stuff uh, that can kind of move everything in the background uh, or the foreground or whatever is, is static and solid. So yeah. Chuck on the mask, you know, track the mask through, no problem. As I said, you've got to tweak it for a little bit and then feather it 
just to you know kind of get the lighting to line up. One thing I had with this is the way that I set up my lighting, and this is something that I, I, I can't find uh, any kind of YouTube tutorials work around it. It's something that I need to try to figure out. Is obviously the way I had my lighting set up, the me stood up is casting quite a large shadow on the back wall. So obviously during the mask, I've kind of had to account for that as well, because I think all of a sudden if the shadow disappears, although you might maybe get away with it, um, it you know, it, it's obviously a bit of a cheaper job um, if that kind of happens. But I think I did a, a good job of being able to track in the mask as well. Now, during my first take, what I noticed, me on the sofa is obviously sitting down, sofa's soft, cushions move. Trying to get the masks to, to line up on that one was a lot more difficult. And then again, with the feathering, uh, to try and get the lighting uh, of it all to blend was a hell of a lot more difficult and it isn't something uh, that I was able to achieve. Now, I know in After Effects you can do uh, much more detailed masks and you can also do uh, variable feathering. Um, so you can, you know, have it different parts of kind of your mask uh, at different feathering uh, opacities. Yeah, I guess that's something moving forward for kind of more detailed ones looking into, uh, you'd probably do it in After Effects. But in general, as a first go, I think the one that I did there on Premiere Pro uh, actually turned out really, really well. Uh, I'm actually really, really happy with it. So the second task I tried to do was, yeah, pulling a object uh, sort of out of a, a portal, but you know, rather than using sort of After Effects to create a portal kind of thing, because you know, but little steps will build up to that. Um, yeah, I just tried to do it all in Premiere Pro and I used a photo frame to use as the uh, masking area and I got some help from Bernadette and Sebastian. Here we go. Ooh, will you make me a brew? Ah, uh, thank you. In general, again, I'm really happy with how this one turned out. It's not perfect. If you do watch it, you can kind of notice a spot where due to the feathering there, there is like a lighting difference um, of where his hand disappears. But I think for a first go at it, uh, it turned out quite well. Again, this is something where I think I would need the After Effects variable feathering tool. So you can just have like a hard line on the frame, but then have a decent amount of feathering kind of all around the rest of the mask. Um, to yeah, kind of get the lighting of the two shots to blend in well. But in general, I think the concept is there. The execution wasn't perfect. Um, it is something that I do just need to look into in After Effects. So there we go. There is my first foray uh, into trying to do a bit more creative things with masks in Premiere Pro. Do let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. If you've got any advice or links to any videos on the kind of issues that I faced, and you, or you know you know yourself, uh, kind of like oh no, this is a better way to blend lighting in them or, or whatever. Again, do comment down below and let me know. If you've enjoyed the video, do give it a thumbs up. Do subscribe to my channel. I will be doing more stuff like this in the future. And until next time, take care.